start. So what I loved about Chelsea's performance today wasn't that they scored early, per se. It wasn't how well they got back into a defensive shape. That was excellent. We'll touch on that. It was the game management from Maresca. Football fans have this habit of treating the game we love, the beautiful game of football, like a movie, like they've gone to the ballet, like, they're, like, like they want a good beginning, a middle and end to every single game. But football isn't about, not every time, it is some, a final is, as an example, but typically speaking, football is about the entirety of the season and beyond that at times. So the beginning and the middle and the end is your season, not just one particular match. The game management today from Maresca was out of this world. They scored two goals in the opening 18 minutes, thoroughly deserved, two well-worked goals, excellent finishes from Jackson. And then his team just absorbed West Ham for the rest of the game. And that, for me, was the most worrying factor as a rival, is they just managed the game so simplistically, so easily afterwards. They killed it as a spectacle. For a neutral, it was boring after that point. But I enjoyed it, and I enjoyed it because it shows a different level to this team. One second, my son's here. Yes, son? <laughs> Go to the toilet, I'll be with you in a minute. <laughs> Look at that, daddy daycare while I'm working. But for me, it's... It, that, that's thrown me. That is what it's all about. You go, son, and I'll be there as soon as you need me, okay? Thank you. And it's one of those things... That, his name's Jackson, by the way, as well. Uh, he's a namesake today with a brace. But for me, it's a case of that game management was the most impressive part of the game today for me, personally. Defensively, Chelsea were brilliant. And I spoke th Thursday night about how invincible and unbeatable Arsenal's defence has looked for a prolonged period of time. What I saw through pre-season with Chelsea in the opening games, they looked so vulnerable so regularly. And today, for large parts of the game, they looked solid. They looked very strong. And whenever a line did get broken, because you've got players like Kudos on the pitch who can take people on, who can break a line, but somebody stepped up cut out the cross, block the shot, goalkeeper made the save. It's all part of defending as well. They were absolutely brilliant defensively, I felt, as well. Now, on top of that, on top of that, which I also think is really, really important and key, is to talk about some individual players. And it's one of those things where I look at individual players. Jackson, first of all, gets a lot of criticism. I think that's eight goals since the start of May. He's in a really good run of goal scoring form and deserves absolute credit for how well he performed up front today. Hold up play was good. His finishing was deadly. Chelsea just needs to see more of this at the most opportune moments. But what a performance from him. I think Chelsea look an exponentially better team defensively with Tossin at the back. He's a unit as well. Good on the ball. I just think they look more comfortable. It would be even better once they get Gusto back in the right back position because Fafana looks lost out there personally. But Tossin, brilliant addition. Enzo Fernandez today, very strong performance from him. Very, very, very good on the ball. I thought Palmer, yes, he was quiet in the first half, but listen, Hassan's prediction that he's going to have a much, much, much worse season GA-wise, proven wrong. I, th I think he's already been proven wrong. I thought it was excellent from him in, in, in that side of things. Enzo, for me, Enzo wasn't mid at all. So I thought it was very good. I thought Enzo played very, very well today. Caicedo. Wow. That man won nearly every tackle he went in for. He was strong. His passing was good. Obviously, he set up the goal. Everything Caicedo touched today turned to gold. Caicedo was absolutely phenomenal. For the, he today was the player that everybody saw at Brighton. That, that today was the epitome of it. Not the first time he's done it for Chelsea. He's done it other times, but he was great. I thought Kukurea, yes, he got taken on a couple of times by Kudas, but Mohamed Kudas can do it for the best fullbacks in the world. Kukurea, again, listen, one of the best... Maybe the only good thing Potts did for Chelsea last year was playing Kukurea in the Carabao Cup when he was almost going on loan to Man United to stop that from happening. Because I'd love to have this Kukurea playing left-back for my club right now, which is an area of weakness for us. I thought he was very, very good as well. 
Um, I really did. And I might be missing, but look, I thought that Sandro and Madway, uh, Noni, I thought they did okay today. Um, but it was it's a hard game to judge those two. They went 2 0 up, and Chelsea started to manage the game. And I said earlier, that was key. The one bit I missed about why it was so key is you can't play all games 90 minutes at 100 miles an hour. Otherwise, you're going to end up in a situation where you run out of steam at the end of the campaign. So you could have maybe seen more from Madweke and from Sancho if they needed more goals, but they simply didn't need to attack in that way. But I thought overall today, Chelsea were excellent. Yes, West Ham were poor. Yes, West Ham probably picked the wrong starting lineup with a lack of athleticism. But you still have to finish your chances. You still have to defend well. You still have to be resolute as a unit. And you cannot take that away from Chelsea. Today, they were dangerous, potent, scary, and deadly. And they pick up three points. They go second in the league. And this, this start of the world under Moresca has been very good. Not perfect, but it's certainly been very, very good indeed. And Chelsea fans should be celebrating and very, very, very happy indeed. I do want to touch very quickly on the penalty because although I don't believe it would have changed the outcome of today's football match in any capacity, I think that Chelsea still would have won. I also think that West Ham should have had a penalty and I want to call out these poor refereeing decisions irrespective of who they impact. Chelsea fans that have watched the Terrace a long time will remember when you guys were robbed of a clear penalty for a handball. I think it was Suchek or somebody saved it on the floor. Couldn't believe that wasn't given. Today's one bothered me, not because it's Chelsea, not because Chelsea cheated, not because it's Chelsea's fault. So please hear what, where I'm coming from. There is no reason that you should be allowed to grab anybody's wrist for a second, two seconds, three seconds, five seconds, anywhere on the pitch and it not be a foul. It should always be a foul. For me, I, I think that's an horrendous rule of but how long was he holding on for? All it takes is that split second and you slow a player down. Just literally now, get your friend in your house or your, your missus or your boyfriend to hold your wrist with one hand, try and sprint. Even if you break away from them holding on to you because you're more powerful, you're much quicker when someone's not holding your arm. <laughs> you know? So I, I did think that was an horrendous decision. I don't think it would have changed the course of the game. I still think Chelsea had so much in reserve, they could have put three or four more goals in. But I do think it's important to still call out these horrendous refereeing decisions, irrespective of the outcome of the game, who won, who lost, because we, I think this, this should get as much airtime as if it went against Chelsea and Chelsea lost 1 0. Say, say Chelsea conceded, a, uh, sorry, say Chelsea were losing 1 0 and then they were fouled in that same way and they didn't get the opportunity to equalize. Uh, we'd all be calling this out, right? So I think it needs the same energy because we want more consistency from referees. However, rivals are not, to, shouldn't be blaming. Chelsea and they shouldn't be blaming anybody else other than the referees. Equally, I saw a lot of people delaying restarts today and no yellow cards. <laughs> Again, both sides did it. Why? Because it's natural in football. Where was the yellow cards, PGMOL? You morons, you mugs, you charlatans, you cheats. They cheat all of us, irrespective of the colour shirt 